All right, for more tonight, I'm joined here at the big table by Torsten Benner. He's co-founder and director of the Global Public Policy Institute here in Berlin. Torsten, it's good to have you back on the show. I, I want to show our viewers the text from Germany's new guidelines on 5G, um, because this is the part that's really raising some eyebrows. Let's we'll see if we can't pull that up and show our, our viewers. It reads, um, to provide assurance of the trustworthiness of the supplier, the commission company shall obtain a comprehensive declaration from them. The declaration must relate to all components and where appropriate functionalities relevant to security, as well as providing complete information on the supplier. Now, that's a lot of you know, contract language for saying basically you have to certify that you're trustworthy. I is that good enough when we're talking about something as important as 5G networks for a company or a country? It's certainly not good enough. Uh, this is critical infrastructure. It has grave national security and technological sovereignty implications. And uh, now what the German government in this draft guidelines has agreed on is that Huawei just needs to self-declare that it's trustworthy, mm -hmm. and then it gets allowed to provide up to two-thirds uh, of the German 5, 5G network. Uh, that's not at all taking these security concerns seriously that are not just raised by the US and Australia, by mm -hmm. the way. The German intelligence services see it that way. The German interior ministry sees it that way. The German foreign office has grave concerns about this. Uh, there are big industrial policy considerations because uh, the European suppliers that have excellent technology, uh, Ericsson, Huawei, Ericsson and Nokia find mm -hmm. themselves in an unfair competition with uh, Huawei and uh, need to be uh, supported. Uh, but Chancellor Merkel, out of fear of retribution, but yeah, that's what decided uh, that she wants to allow Huawei in, although she, I think, understands the security risks that are associated with that. Well, if there were a different relationship to the United States right now, if there were a different president, do you think that Merkel's um, decision would be different? No, I don't think it would be different because uh, what she's afraid of is retaliation, retribution by the Chinese government uh, against really? German government uh, against German companies, yeah. and uh, our companies, Siemens, uh, Volkswagen, they're in to the China business. They're very dependent, up to 30, 40% of their, their revenue is dependent on the, the market uh, in China. And uh, I think Angela Merkel has decided that maybe compounded by Trump and the volatility he has in, mm. injected, uh, it's certainly a factor, but uh, I do think it's just the, the fear of uh, retribution that's informing her but, policy. But we're talking about the, the, the like profit sources for companies, for German companies, that profit sources outside of the country, in China. But 5G, though, we're talking about the security inside the country. I mean, those are two, they're not... Of, of course they're not related, but... Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I mean, one's much, I would assume that for her, the, the security of the country should be much more important than the profits of one, Siemens. One would hope so, but I think uh, she sells out the longer-term security implications mm. uh, that will materialize in four or five years only uh, mm. to the, her worries mm. about short-term potential economic risks. Um, today, um, Huawei's top executive in Europe published a letter yeah. about 5G in Europe. Um, in this segment called Our Attention, let's pull that up. Um, it reads, Europe is open and inclusive, and it is this openness and inclusivity which allows us to work together effectively. We, we must understand each other's points of view and reconcile each other's interests. This exchange of ideas will move us forward together. That is coming from a Chinese company. It's beyond comical uh, because uh, Huawei, is, first of all, it's a very proud partner of the party state in, its, in the repression in Xinjiang mm -hmm. and other provinces uh, in China. It supports the surveillance and repression apparatus there and does so proudly. And in addition, uh, Huawei of, is of course beholden to the Chinese government and ultimately under its control if push comes to shove. Mm -hmm. And to say that uh, they share the European values of the rule yeah. of law and, and openness. It's, uh, it's uh, a sales pitch, but a sales pitch that for me is beyond comical. And just take a look um, at, at this other part yeah. of the letter. It's also um, interesting to say the least. Um, it reads, the first industrial revolution was forged in Europe out of industry. The second and third industrial revolutions were led by America through mass production and digitalization. 
Now, he says, I think it is only fitting that the fourth industrial revolution should again see Europe at the forefront. That is also, that's, that's not realistic, first of all, but doesn't he mean Europe with China? Exactly, Europe with using Huawei's technology. And yeah. I think the party state has made it very clear that they want to be the leaders of the, what he calls the fourth uh, revolution yeah. they have made in China 2025, and they want to be the uh, artificial intelligence leader in 2030. So we in Germany, these were just draft guidelines mm, that were right. published. So it's important, and they were drafted by a minor cybersecurity agency in the German system because Merkel wanted to have it out of the hands of mm -hmm. professionals and parliamentarians uh, and out of the broader political process. She delegated down, delegated it down mm -hmm. in, to a lower administrative level. And right now it's up to parliamentarians. There are quite a few German members of parliament who are very concerned about uh, the mistake uh, we're making with these guidelines. And parliament can just take things into their own hands and pass a law that would actually take our security concerns seriously, our technological sovereignty concerns, and also the industrial policy concerns uh, that are associated with this monumental decision that I think we shouldn't delegate to a minor agency. Well, I mean, if it stays this way, it'll be interesting to see how Washington um, reacts to it. Um, you know, either way, um, the- No, not just Washington, it's also a question of European unity, yeah, of because course. this very much undermines a common standard within the European Union. Poland has been very critical, France is, is critical, and uh, if the biggest European country just sells it out, itself out to China, it sends, yeah. sell, uh, sends a terrible signal. Torsten Bennett with the Global Public Policy Institute. Torsten, as always, we appreciate your time and your insights. Thank you. Thank you.